Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I'm gonna show you three kind of like reasons why I see people failing with Facebook ads and how to actually solve them. Now, before we jump into the video, I just wanna quickly mention I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call with me in this video. If that's something then that you want the chance to win, all you have to do is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you come to know my previous one then, just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said then, without any further ado, let's get straight to number one. Number one then guys is focusing on the front end sales and what I mean by that then is the the initial ad sets that you run that go out there and the audience that you select that sees your ad is the first time they encounter you and your product and your brand. Um, so essentially you're spending say £10 today to try and make £20 back in the same day and with Facebook ads then that's becoming more and more increasingly hard to do purely because of the rise in competition the rise in CPMs so what you have to do is pretty much just adjust your strategy and make more money on the back end ad sets so a couple of things then I want to show you in amongst these particular ad sets here is number one is the amount spent um, as you can see there's only a handful of them but all of them have spent a little bit over two thousand pounds some of them a bit more than that and the second thing is the ROAS so as you can see it's it's only 1.69 on average, which is nothing crazy, but the job that these ad sets are doing allow me to make a lot of money on the back end, which I'm going to be showing you in a second. But the thing I want to touch on in here then is that don't just focus on what that ad set is bringing in on the day, focus on the data it's bringing in, focus on, on the leads it's bringing in. And that's kind of like the way I think of these ad sets is like they're lead generators. All the leads that come through these particular ad sets then allow me to produce the results I get through these ad sets, if that makes sense. So again, I'm just gonna go and refresh the table data so we can get the latest results. And what you can see here then is that there's a ton more ad sets. That's because there's a lot more different testing going on, a lot more different audiences. Um, and essentially these are all my retargeting and lookalike audiences. Um, and the key difference here then is that you can see I've spent less, but the ROAS is so much higher. And the reason behind this then is because every time somebody sees your, sees your ad for the second, third, fourth time, um, within their brains, you become more of an established business, you become more trustworthy, and therefore they become more willing to buy from you. Um, and if not buy from you, then engage with you. And an engagement is worth a lot, um, especially when you're advertising on a social media platform. So the key to this first point then is don't just focus on what you're making back in that very same day. Um, focus on the bigger picture, focus on what you can essentially make from what you've just spent. So in terms of the leads that you've generated, um, the additional people you have on your your custom audiences, who you can retarget, the lookalike audiences you can now generate, um, and just focus on trying to show your mission statement, show your brand, show your vision, show your product to the same person as many times as possible, because it won't always be the first time somebody sees you in which they buy from you. And you don't just have to take my word on this then, just to quickly take a look at this website I found here. If you just look at the rule of seven in terms of social media marketing and e-commerce, um, it's a well-established rule. It's been going since like the 1930s, and as it's it says here then it's been proven over and over that the more positive contact you have with customers and prospects the easier it is to develop and sustain relationships and ultimately close more sales and just a couple of other points as well I want to highlight to you is that social media absolutely crushes old school marketing because it allows you to leverage things like retargeting ads so you can constantly show people your ad your product many many times over and over and over um, and that is kind of like the biggest advantage to Facebook and social media marketing is the fact that you have the power to do that whereas when people advertised in newspapers or they advertised in pay um on TV, there's no like specific way to keep track of who you're advertising to. So there's no real like set in stone way of knowing how many people have seen your ad. Whereas with Facebook, it gives you all of that data. So number one then is just make the most of the data rather than just looking at things from a front end point of view. Number two then guys um, comes down to testing products. I see people testing products in all the wrong places um, or in, wrong in a lot of different ways. I don't just mean in terms of placements. However, this is gonna be the kind of example that I show you guys, um, but in loads of different ways. And testing products is really, really important because if you don't test a product correctly, um, it can lead you to wasting a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, and essentially when it comes down, what, boil, what testing products boils down to is 
trying to bring in as much data as possible about a particular audience, about a particular product, so you can make informed decisions when it comes to pursuing a particular product or a particular audience. And just to kind of illustrate my point then, um, we're in an ad set here, um, it's a WC campaign, as you can see, you've got dog purchase conversion, and the daily budget then is 20 pounds, and the detail tagged, and then there is none. So it's all broad, it's UK, 18 plus, all genders, etc. And just to kind of illustrate um, the differences, you, the significant differences you can make depending on what kind of platforms you choose, um, I'm just going to show you this little trick here. So as you can see, then we've got all the platforms selected. So as you can see, then we've got all the different platforms available to us selected. And our daily reach then is a maximum of 5.2 thousand people. If I'm just to get rid of the Instagram newsfeed, it goes up to 5.6. If I get rid of the stories as well, it goes up to 4.8. So we're reaching an extra four to 600 people simply by reducing um, some of the placements. So essentially we're getting a higher reach for the same amount of people. Therefore, we're gonna see more data coming in for the same price, if that makes sense. And it just shows you how competitive these spaces are and testing products in competitive spaces is a sure way then to essentially spend a lot of money um, and not seeing a lot in return. And again, just to kind of illustrate that point, if I just get rid of the Facebook newsfeed, then you can see that jumps up to nearly 80,000 people per day. So it just shows you how competitive that particular space is. And if you're gonna be testing it in those spaces, then you need to have a lot of budget to back that up. The next thing I wanna show you then, I've shown it before in a video, but this is for all the people that are new um, to the channel, is um, just by changing your campaign objective, you can change the amount of reach you're going to, you're going to um, essentially achieve. So you can see the reach here then is 5.2 thousand people. The tag in is broad, it's a WC campaign and 20 pounds per day. If I just go back to the campaign objective, we'll choose a traffic campaign, go to continue. Uh, we'll just double check all the stats are the same. So obviously we've got a traffic objective up there, 18 plus UK or genders. Um, automatic placements or placements again at 20 pound per day you can see our reach is now up to 50,000 people so it's almost 10x the amount so when you're testing a product then it just doesn't make sense to go straight to purchase campaigns because you'll have to spend 10 times the amount to see the same amount of data come back in if that makes sense so that's number two then is that I see people testing products in the wrong ways um, and testing products is pretty much like the foundation of your business. If you can't test a product correctly, then you haven't got a chance of succeeding. Number three then guys is YouTube. Um, just purely because this is where I find most people tend to come to do research on things like Facebook ads um, and watch different strategies, etc. So this is my playlist then of all the different Facebook ad videos I've done. Um, and people will watch one of these videos or it'll be somebody else's video. They'll run the strategy and if it doesn't work after a single day, then they'll message me or the message whoever and they'll say Facebook ads don't work. When in reality then the kind of like underlying um, problem here is that people don't have a true understanding of Facebook ads and what they're trying to achieve, what essentially they're trying to achieve it on. Um, so when it doesn't work, they don't really know what to do. Um, so it, you have to boil it down to essentially the bare bones in the very beginning of it. So number one then is that you're advertising on a social media platform. So what actually does that mean? Social media isn't a place where people go to do their online shopping. So when somebody's on Facebook, then they're probably there for like a few a handful of different reasons. Number one is to watch stupid videos, funny videos of um, cats playing the piano or spy on people they don't even like so they can go and bitch about them to their friends later on. Um, they're not on there to buy dog collars or to buy dust mops or to buy indestructible shoes. They're just not there. So what you have to understand is what people are thinking in their mind when they're on Facebook and how you can get them to stop focusing on that really funny cat playing a video and actually focus on your ad um, and actually click on it and actually go to buy it. So there is a psychology behind it. And the next thing you've got to understand as well is that it's interruption marketing. You're interrupting somebody's day. People are on Facebook not to spend money. So if you try and advertise them a product that's say $200, um, the chances of somebody spending $200 just on the whim, on the impulse is very slim. So there's particular products that fit that psychology of getting people to buy them. Um, and going back to the point about interruption marketing, a good metaphor, metaphor I like to use then is that if you're 
Um, if you're out in town at a restaurant having dinner with your friends, you're socializing like you would on Facebook, kind of similar, and then somebody comes over to the table and tries to sell you a dog collar and they've just got a, like a, um, a load of dog collars around their arm, then the chances are you're just gonna tell them to bugger off because you're not interested. And that's essentially what you're doing. You're doing the same thing. You're interrupting somebody's day to try and sell them a dog collar. Um, so number three then, just to kind of wrap this video up, I don't wanna like, talk on for ages and ages and bore people is that actually try and understand what you're doing here. So you're advertising on a social media platform. What are people on that platform doing? What are the kind of things they're thinking? What are the kind of things you have to get them to think in order to buy your product? And then you have to understand how Facebook ads work. Get to know the ads manager. Know what the audience insights tool is. Know what CPM means and understand what it's in relation to. So if you've got a high CPM, then why have you got a high CPM? It's because the space you're advertising in um, two reasons, either number one, it's really competitive, so there's loads of other people trying to advertise in that space, it's supply and demand, it's a bidding platform, and number two then, it could be because your relevance score is really low. If you've got a really re low relevance score, then it shows that the people who are seeing your ad aren't interested in it, the audience you've selected isn't a good one, therefore your CPMs are low. And the reason your CPMs are gonna be low then is because Facebook wants to give their users a good experience. If Facebook constantly spams their users with ads that they don't like, people are gonna stop using Facebook. There's loads of other d different social media platforms they can, they can then go and start using. So you have to give people a good experience whilst trying to sell them a product. So how do you do that? You have to put your ad together in a fun and creative way that people, that makes people want to engage with it. And with that being said then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. I feel like I've been talking on for ages and ages now. Um, if you're still watching the video, then thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Uh, make sure you comment in the thoughts below. Let me know, do you think that these three tips will help you or not? Um, and if they do, then make sure you come back and let me know as well. Also, if you do leave a comment down below, then of course you'll be entered into that draw for a chance to win a one-to-one -one call. And with that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous one. Here we are then guys on my previous video. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, please do go and check it out. Um, I feel like it's quite a useful video that I think is going to help a lot of people in the long run. Um, however, there's quite a lot of home truths in it then that perhaps not a lot of people want to actually hear. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into announcing the winner. I'm just going to take the URL, um, head over to our random comment picker. So these competitions, by the way, are 100% random. I don't pick the winners, so please don't ask me to pick you. Um, but you can always book one. But anyway, I'll say that, mention that in a second. The winner of the previous video is MTC. So thank you very much for commenting on my video. Um, if you want to book that call there, make sure you reach out to me on Instagram, that's the best way. Um, and if you just wanna get straight down to business and stop trying your luck every single video and just book a call right away, you can actually do so. Just make sure you check out the links in the video description below. And with that being said then guys, I really appreciate you tuning into this video um, and I'll see you in the next one.